Hello, Kim Townsville here. Today's topic will be bottle prayers. It's not weird, it's actually a thing. From the time I was a little kid, I was always fascinated by the whole message in a bottle thing. Um, t putting a, a message in a bottle and throwing it into the ocean, what are the odds it's going to find its way to the receiver? Or what are the odds that it's just not going to like completely totally be destroyed? I was always fascinated by that. And growing up, I loved bottles. I collected bottles. I still do. I have all types of bottles that I collect. I grew up on about 77 acres of land, and there was an old dump out there. Several old dumps, actually, and people just um, threw all kinds of bottles out there. And it was like a it was like a big pot of gold to me to go out there and dig up and find bottles that were still intact and wonder about the person who had used the contents of that bottle, what what were, uh, what were was their world like, what, why were they using this product, the thought process. It was just kind of magical to me to think about someone who's probably dead now that used these old bottles. It was just really cool to me. It was a way for me to get in touch with um, the, the previous owners of the land. These are some bottles I found on the last excursion into the woods. I think the blue bottles are probably milk and magnesia bottles, but they're really cool once they get cleaned up. Not sure what the other ones are. It always makes me wonder what was in it and who was using it and why they threw them out. Here's some bottles I've collected over the years. Um, I actually have most of my children's teeth that fell out. You can see those in a little jar there and my son's ponytail from his first haircut. This is on my filing cabinet. The first filing cabinet holds uh, fancy jars. Maybe they help ladies perfume, some kind of fancy grooming products. With some other bottles that I've used that I thought were attractive. The middle one is the green collection. It has a lot of alcohol, be uh, excuse me, alcohol bottles, as you can see, and green artifacts I've collected. Then the last falling cabinet is the brown and the beige section. Also has some beer bottles I've collected, some Clorox bottles that I found in the dump, which are really, really cool. And a lot of Old Spice ceramic bottles from my grandfather, who loved Old Spice. I also have a little china cabinet, I guess what you would call it, with some bottles in it. These are some more bottles that I found on the family land and some that I've accumulated over the years. There's an old Budweiser bottle. Uh, all of Olay bottles. This is the blue shelf and I have a lot of those blue bottles. Somebody really must have used the milk of magnesia back in the day. People who lived on the land previously. There's a lot of those. There's a lot of them that are really too cracked to to bring in and, and to save. Then this is just some odds and ends, some old books that I have and there's one a smaller Clorox uh, bottle, the amber bottle there with some Dick and Jane readers and some books that my children ran when they were little. I don't save all bottles. The, there's some that I shoot. The one on the far right, I love that one because it's got one shot that cracked through it. And this was when, during my early shooting days, and I was shooting at 50 feet or so with the Smith & Wesson snub. So the whole message in the bottle thing, I thought, well, why not just send, um, a message to the universe using these bottles instead of us putting a message in there and tossing it out into the sea and uh, the receiver never sending it. Why not use bottles to send a message to the universe? And so I started collecting some bottles and putting some little, I guess what I call prayers in there. And I didn't think it was weird. I would just think about uh, someone who needed a prayer, needed some thought process and find some things in nature, put it down in the bottle, maybe put a picture of the person down in there and then seal the bottle up and go put it somewhere back out in the woods where, where it wouldn't be disturbed for, uh, or possibly wouldn't be disturbed for a long time. So I did that for years and years and years and didn't know it was actually a thing. These are some bottle prayers I have done for my friend. One's for my friend Judy, one's for my friend Catherine, and one's for my friend David. These are some empty bottles that people I love have given me and I'm saving those to do bottle prayers for them or people that mean something to them in their life. These are two that I started from my grandchildren. These are bottles that my son, their father, left at my house. And this is where I started them. I put some glitter that Catherine sent me in a birthday card. I added some other personal items, some nature items. Began filling them with wax from candles and those are almost finished. 
These are actually some bottle prayers that I made for myself a long time ago. I was going through some uh, health crisis issues and some financial and some professional issues all within the space of like maybe three or four years. And I needed to be really, really selfish and focus on uh, those, those needs of myself. So I collected some bottles and did some bottle prayers for myself and I still keep those here. I needed to keep those in my house instead of putting them in the woods because I needed to focus on taking care of myself and the, the things that were happening to me because I was not going to be able to take care of anyone I loved or cared about if I didn't handle those uh, domains in my life at that time. These are my personal prayer bottles that um, I still have in my house. I'm not Wiccan, I'm not Pagan, I'm not anything like that. I'm just really, you have to be a really, really good person to be a Wiccan person, and it's really too ceremonial for me. It's, um, I don't like really organized religion that tells you like what you've got to do and things like that. To me, this is just a form of prayer. The way I've, I've tried to explain it to people, if you have like a father and a son who are sitting down to have a talk, and the father's giving the son a baseball or just whatever you want to do, and the son sitting there playing with the baseball, or even maybe the father and the son are you know, tossing the ball back and forth to each other, and they're, they're talking to one another, but they're not looking at one another. Because a lot of times people will talk to someone better when they're not having to make eye contact with them. So this thing, whatever you're holding, the bottle, the objects that go in the bottle, they're just tangible things that people focus and they say, I need to have this talk, I need to have this lesson, I need to have this conversation, I need to do this thing. It's just a tangible thing to help someone hold on to while they're having this talk or this conversation or this prayer. So to me, my manipulations, the objects that I put into a prayer bottle, they're just tangible and observable ways to make me focus. If it takes me 30 minutes to make a prayer bottle, then that's me dedicating myself to the time that I'm going to take to put these objects in this bottle, to think about this person that I'm going to be thinking about them, I'm making a conscious and tangible effort to pray for this person, and then once I seal it up and either give it to the person or put it someplace safe or put it somewhere where I think it won't be disturbed, it's just a way of focusing, saying, hey, you know what, I'm going to spend 30 minutes praying for you, and it's, it's real, and I, I really did do it. I wasn't distracted while I was doing it. I wasn't just doing it while I was doing something else. You got my complete and total focus for whatever it is, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, ever long, ever how long it takes me to do that particular bottle. So there's nothing magical about it. It's just a way for me to to be concentrated on um, prayers and thoughts for people. I said there's no magic to this, but there might be a little bit of magic or supernatural power in this. This is the side of my yard, and the trees that have felled fell in the 2011 tornado that came through and did a lot of damage in Alabama. And do you see the bottles out there? I did some old prayer bottles and put them out in the woods, like in some dead tree stumps, and kind of hid them around some places where I thought they would be mostly safe. So we're going to take a little bit closer look at them. These somehow managed to survive all kinds of winds and tornadoes. They were in an old tree stump. They froze and did not break, so they're just kind of out there in a little nest. Hopefully you saw from that last shot how close those huge trees were to my house and they fell opposite from my house. Thank goodness my house would have been demolished by these two tall trees falling on top of them during that tornado. When the trees fell over they left gaping holes which are kind of filled in by now. But by that tree there was another tree stump where I put in prayers for my sons and these again were full of liquid. And over the years, they have not frozen and busted. They did not bust open when the tree fell down. They managed to survive, which is pretty awesome that my prayer bottles on either side of these trees survived.
As I said, when these trees fell over, the root systems left gaping holes in the ground, which have been filled in through the past few years. But I'm tossing in all kinds of bottles and things for someone to find in the future and wonder about me. So thank you for watching. Uh, as always, for the whole YouTube thing, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Leave your comments below. Subscribe um, if you want to see more of the weird wanderings and wonderings of my mind. Until next time, take care and pray for someone, for real. Bye.